Welcome back to The Ed Show. As more details emerge about the United States operation to capture Osama bin Laden, a picture is emerging of a president who took a very hands-on approach as the mission developed. The Navy SEAL assault team arrived at the compound by helicopter and emerged and engaged, should I say, in a 40-minute firefight. The aftermath is seen here in the footage from ABC News. A U.S. official said bin Laden used a woman, possibly his wife, as a human shield. She and bin Laden were both killed by what is being called return fire. The president and his aides wanted waited for updates uh, on the mission in the White House Situation Room, where the White House received this message. Geronimo KIA, code for the Navy SEALs that bin Laden was dead. President Obama's decision to give the go ahead for the raid came after many top advisors pushed the president to bomb the count compound from the air. Chief White House counterterrorism advisor John Brennan was among them. He had this evaluation of the president's decision today. When President Obama was uh, faced with the uh, opportunity to uh, act upon this, uh, the president had to evaluate uh, the strength of the information and then made what I believe was one of the, the most uh, gutsiest calls uh, of uh, any president in recent memory. Joining me right now to explain the details of that gutsy decision, Michael Sheehan, former also, he's a terrorism analyst for NBC News and has been for years. We're great to have him with us tonight. Take us through this, this mission. Once that helicopter landed, what happened? Well, first of all, a landing is tough enough because they're coming in at night into a compound with, with walls around it, possible wires, trees. When they land, they're actually, they're coming out of a, what's called a fast rope. They're coming down a rope very close to the ground, hitting, hitting the ground running, moving to their designated points where then they move towards clearing, towards the buildings where they clean the, clear the rooms systematically. They burst into the rooms, identify either friend or foe, Eliminate the enemies and protect the protect the innocent. Did they take fire on? Apparently, they took fire on early on when when uh, when they when they entered. Okay, was this a uh, kill mission or was this a capture mission, if possible? Well, I've heard that referred to. Actually, it's not a kill mission. They went in there and killed Bin Laden. That's right. But a lot of the other people that were on that compound that were not terrorists were not killed. These are very highly trained shooters. They know how to they know how to distinguish in a second, a blink of a second, whether a person that by looking at the hands and other techniques that are trained on whether how to engage someone who's threatening them and take it out or protect someone that's not a threat. You told me today you've been tracking bin Laden for 14 years, following every move he has made. How gutsy of a decision was this for the president to send the SEALs in and not bomb the target? This was a very difficult decision, Ed, and a very important one. I've been involved in the special operations community and counterterrorism for 30 years, for bin Laden for 14 years. Helicopter operations are by inherently risky. If you think back to Desert One, when President Carter sent the helicopters into Tehran, they had a crash in, in the desert out there. It, was, it scuttled his presidency. Mogadishu, 1990, 1993, Black Hawk down, helicopters trying to capture Idid. The president took a huge risk here by putting helicopters into Pakistan, but it worked. It was the right decision. It's very important for our, for our war on terrorism to, to get bin Laden, to get the body, to verify what it was, and to have no collateral damage and no casualties, and show that the U.S. Special Operations Forces can reach out anywhere in the world and grab the people that we want. Let's bring in Matthew Alexander. He is a former military interrogator who uh, tracked down senior al-Qaeda leaders in Iraq, and he is also the author of the book Kill or Capture. Uh, i got to ask you, Mr. Alexander, uh, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, did he serve up the critical information here and did the waterboarding work because some people are saying that it was? In fact, there are a couple of lawmakers, uh, one from Iowa uh, and one from New York, saying that, yes, the waterboarding made a difference. Your take on that? And no, I don't believe that at all. In fact, uh, it turns out that Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, if the piece of information he gave uh, was the fact that bin Laden had a courier, one is not anything that's that revealing. Every senior leader, uh, uh, Al Qaeda leader, has a courier. Uh, but two, it happened a year after he was waterboarded, uh, which tells me, from my experience that I saw in Iraq, uh, that the waterboarding actually slowed down the acquisition of intelligence by a year. Where does this leave us, gentlemen, with Pakistan? Uh, Matthew, you first. What, where does this leave us with Pakistan, and, and, and what does it mean that the president decided to do this without them? 
Uh, well, I think it puts increased pressure on Pakistan uh, to step up to the plate and to meet us halfway on uh, collecting intelligence uh, against Al Qaeda. Uh, and, and it is embarrassing for them. There's no way to deny the fact that uh, bin Laden was staying uh, fairly close to Islamabad uh, has, is embarrassing to the Pakistani intelligence. Um, it's difficult to track people down, as we saw in Iraq when we hunted Abu Masab al-Zarqawi, uh, who was also in a, in a house, in a rural area, uh, a fairly expensive house. Uh, and so that tends to be a trend item with these al-Qaeda leaders. They don't seem to, to live in the squand squander that uh, their foot soldiers do. Uh, but this is something that Pakistan is going to have to uh, increase their ops tempo and intelligence collection to meet us uh, on this responsibility. Mr. Sheehan, going at it alone. Absolutely right, and I'll tell you, this is important. But our relation for Pakistan is critical. And for the good news about Pakistan, at least they came out with the right words after the event today, kind of saying, yes, this is great, we were part of it, insinuating we're part of it. Pakistan is a complicated, troubled ally. We're going to have to work with them, and when we can't, we work unilaterally. We've had our chances to get Osama bin Laden in the past. This is a Delta Force officer telling 60 Minutes about an operation to kill bin Laden in Tora Bora. Here it is. The original plan uh, that we sent up to our higher headquarters, Delta Force wants to come in over the mountain with oxygen, coming from the Pakistan side, over the mountains and come in and get a drop on Bin Laden from behind. Why didn't you do that? Uh, disapproved at some level above us, whether that was uh, Central Command uh, or all the way up to the President of the United States, I'm, I'm not sure. All the way up to the President of the United States. Matthew, what does it say about President Obama's being so intricately involved in this operation with this opportunity presented? Well, I think you put it perfectly earlier, Ed, when you said that it was a gutsy call. Uh, when we located Abu Masab al-Zarqawi in Iraq, uh, the call was to bomb the house. We dropped two 500-pound bombs in that house because uh, our operators were 20 minutes away. We weren't willing to wait 20 minutes uh, to take the risk of being able to take him alive. Uh, and the other problem with bombing a house uh, we haven't discussed here uh, is that you lose intelligence that way. Some type of media uh, is lost and destroyed in that process, and you can, you can get future targets and stop future attacks uh, by exploiting that media. And, Michael, what about that? We do have his uh, disk. Absolutely. Forty minutes we're in that, in that building, scraping out every bit of information. Now that's a huge plus. Uh, being able to put boots on the ground is very, very important. I have been through in White House meetings and previous administrations in many different presidencies where we passed on opportunities just like this one. This was a uniquely gutsy call by the president. I can tell you I've seen operations like this passed on in, the, in previous administrations. Back a couple, actually. What do you think that helicopter ride was like leaving that compound when those American SEALs knew they had done the job. Oh, they were pr absolutely pumped up, Ed, I can assure you. But these are these are hard and professional. These guys have been at this for years now. They're veterans of many operations. But even this one, they knew how big this was. They're coming back and with a big, big smile of victory on their face. Michael Sheehan, Matthew Alexander, great to have you with us tonight. Thanks so much. Thank you, Ed. Even President Thanks, Bush Ed. said the war on terror is not a war on Islam. I'll talk to the mother of one Muslim American who died on 9-11. And when it comes to the president, Republicans have a hard time giving him credit for anything. The political fallout with Professor Michael Eric Dyson and Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson. Stay with us. That's coming up.